Welcome. Thanks everybody for coming. I'd like to welcome you to Congregation Anne Britt, and thank you for joining us as our daughter Ruth is called to the Torah at the Bat Mitzvah. The term Bat Mitzvah is a title given to every Jewish girl upon reaching her 13th birthday. It signifies that she is now prepared to take personal responsibility for her own religious actions and moral behavior. Although no ritual is required to establish this duty, the Bat Mitzvah ceremony is a demonstration of this commitment. Today, we bear witness to the future of Judaism embodied in a new generation. And if I can deviate from the script, um, this is not going to be your typical service. We've chosen no rabbi. Instead, we created the service, and by we, I mean Pope, created the service <laughs> by learning and researching uh, what was actually required by Jewish law for a proper service like this. And then what she did and we did is we built from there by adding what was meaningful to us. So Ruth is going to be our rabbi, and she'll be leading us in most of the service today. So when the paragraph says she's relying heavily on everyone's participation, she is. Um, as you feel comfortable, join in in prayer and in song as often and as loudly and as enthusiastically as possible because when you're up here doing that, you really want somebody's help. And maybe Ruth can use it. But I don't think so. Um, just so you know, we've got nine states represented as you look around the room. We've got people from all over. We've got a lot of people from Ohio and Michigan. And I know that the Ohio people really like the Michigan people came into the Ohio State University Alumni House and walked by by Bruce Buckeye. Um, those people who didn't laugh at that joke were from my family. We don't know any of them. Um, we also have people from Florida, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, Nevada, and the winner being Oregon, my friend Scott, who came out with one of his daughters, Abby, to be here. So thank you, everyone, for coming and making the trip. Um, the other thing is you came in, you might have seen that there was some food over there. And that's what In Appreciation talks about. We want to thank the congregation, um, our Jewish Learning Program, and the members who brought food. And what that food is going to is something called the uh, School Backpack Project. And those donations are going to feed people, kids, in an impoverished area of Ohio, which is literally just 45 minutes from here. So it's really close. So everybody brought something. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll say one more thing. When you, when you see, everybody has a number, and I know a lot of people are looking through here, looking to see if their name's on here. Don't worry. If we didn't tell you you were reading, you're not reading. So it's okay. <laughs> and just come up here. The mic works great. You don't have to do anything. You have to touch it. You can come up here. And we appreciate those of you who volunteer to, uh, to talk to me. The meaning of Shabbat. To the Jewish community, Shabbat represents a joyful celebration and well-deserved rest. It's an opportunity to connect or reconnect with God, our faith, the world and our family, our friends, and ourselves. Shabbat is celebrated to commemorate the belief that after God created everything that exists in the world, he took a day of rest. In Exodus, we are commanded to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. In Deuteronomy, we are reminded to observe the Sabbath day and sanctify it. We have come together in this Shabbat seeking blessings of Sabbath peace. Help us to cast aside all worries, thoughts, and fears, which take hold of our minds and hearts during the week, that we may, we may renew our sense of wonder for the beauty of creation. Help us to rest on this day of rest, to hear the soft music of the universe, the source of infinite joy, which enriches our existence. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives Sabbath peace to his people. Today is a particularly special day for our community, as Ruth will be called to the Torah for the very first time. As a bat mitzvah, Ruth becomes responsible for upholding the commandments. The commandments are symbolized by the four large fringes on the corner of the talit, and it is customary at this time for the bat mitzvah to receive a talit as she begins her life as a Jewish adult. Thank you. 
And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates, that you remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am Adonai your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai your God. We continue with the Amidah portion of our service. The Amidah is the central prayer of the service. It is also called the standing prayer, because worshippers traditionally stand. The full Amidah consi consists of 19 prayers. On Shabbat, we say seven. Please remain here. Adonai, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your glory. Adonai, sifatai, tiftah, ufi, yagi, tigilatakai. 
Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Elohe Avraham Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rika Elohe Rachel Elohe Leah Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Bahanara El Elyon Gomel Hasidim Tovi Bekone Hakol Musei Avot Who may be go el Lene Venehem Lemaan Shemo Vyahava, Melech Rozer Ubokeh Umoshiach Umogain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Abraham Ubokeh Sarah. Please join me in reciting the English translation of the event. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, and God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Great, mighty, awesome, transcendent God,
O sovereign source of peace, let us know enduring peace, for it is good in your sight to bless Israel and all peoples continually with peace. May the one who causes peace to reign in the high heavens cause peace to reign among us, all Israel, and all the world. Please join us in singing Shamra. Shamra Yisrael Tafsim
The Torah comes from Zion, and the word of God from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to Israel in holiness. Oh, 
mess up the book. Today on this Shabbat here, and in all synagogues around the world, we read the Torah portion of Yitro, which is found in the second book of the Torah, Shemot. Yitro was Moses' father-in-law. In Ruth's reading, Yitro counsels Moses that he cannot continue to adjudicate all of the people's disputes. He advises Moses to make the laws known to all, and then to choose capable, trustworthy people to serve as judges, and have them bring to him only the most difficult matters.
Karen is going to read the English translation of Ruth's Torah reading. The next day, as the Moses went out to the judge the people, they surrounded Moses from morning to evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw that Moses was doing this for the people all by himself, he said, Why are you the only judge? Why do you sit all by yourself while people crowd around you from morning and evening? Moses replied to his father-in-law, The people come to me and ask audience of the night's advice. Whenever they have a dispute, they come to me and I settle the problem between them. I, and I also teach them the Elohim's rules and laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you are doing is not right. The responsibility will exhaust you and harm the nation. You are going to wear yourself out. You cannot do it all alone. Now listen to me. Let me give you a set of advice. May Elohim be with you. You must be. You must continue to be the representative who brings the people problems to Elohim. Explain the rules and laws to the people. Show them all the right paths to take and the rules to follow. But most important, find among the people capable, honest men, and make injustice and fear on them. Appoint them as leaders of thousands of leaders of hundreds of leaders of fifties of leaders of tens. Let them regularly judge the people. Have them bring you all the important cases. But let them judge the minor cases by themselves. In this way, they will be they will share the board and make things easier for you. If you follow this advice and develop your degrees, then you will be able to survive. The entire nation will be able to reach their goals. Amen. Ruth will now teach us about her short portion. That's Be proud, actually, Ruth. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, everyone, and thank you all for coming. It really means a lot to me to have everyone here today because I've worked so hard the past few months, and I'm so excited to be able to share this day with all of you as I become a bat mitzvah. To me, becoming a bat mitzvah is very important because I'm now responsible for my own religious choices. But sadly, I cannot eat off the kids' menu at restaurants anymore. <laughs> Um. <laughs> also, this experience showed me how much work goes into becoming a bat mitzvah because I've never been so stressed out in my life. <laughs> There's so much thought and learning and effort that goes into a bat mitzvah, and yet it's such a fulfilling thing to do. After all of this hard work, standing up here with all of you here to support me is an amazing and incredible feeling. <coughs> My parasha, Torah portion, is Yitro, which is in the book of Exodus, or Shemot, which is the second book of the Torah. In my Torah portion, Moses was trying to do everything as a leader by himself. He was a judge, a teacher of God's rules and laws, and the person who advised the people and delivered them messages from God. When, Mo when Moses' father-in-law, Yitro, saw how much work it was for Moses to be the one, to be the one and only leader, he decided to talk to him about it. Yitro explained to Moses that the role as a leader required too much responsibility, and because of that, he was going to wear himself out and end up making the wrong decision for the Jewish people. While Yitro was talking to Moses, he was careful with the way he was speaking to him. He did not yell at Moses or speak to him in a harsh or mean way, because he knew that by speaking to Moses in the right way, Moses would be more likely to take his advice. Yitro gave Moses some great advice. He told Moses that he should search among all of the people for the most honest and capable men who would hate injustice and appoint them as judges. This way, the smaller cases and problems would be solved by the judges, and the major, more serious cases would be saved for Moses to settle. If needed, Moses could go to God for advice as well. By making these changes, Moses' life would become less stressful and more manageable. More importantly, he would be a strong and good, capable leader for the people. We can learn a lot from this parasha about how we speak to others and how we offer advice. 
In the past, I haven't gone about this the best way. Sometimes I yell at my brother Aaron to do something because he won't listen to me and then we get mad at each other. Now, I can learn from my car shot that yelling at someone doesn't solve everything. It makes things worse. Instead, I, I could be calm and speak to him in a nicer way, like what Yitra does with Moses, and perhaps the result will be way more positive for he, me and for him. Another thing we learned about my parasha is not to be afraid to ask others for help or support. While studying for my bat mitzvah, I was a bit overwhelmed and I asked my mom for help. Together, we were able to tackle the problem and come up with a plan to help me better approach my Torah study. I could have just struggled, cried, and been stressed out, but rather I went to my mom for support and help, and we went about it in a different way. While Moses did not go to Yitro like I went to my mom, perhaps Moses was struggling silently, and Yitro was able to offer support and advice Moses truly needed to move forward. Similar to my situation, Moses, wait, yeah, Moses could have gone on this his own way without Yitro's help. But Yitro's advice helped Moses become a more efficient person and leader. Whether we ask for help or others offer it, we can all benefit from the support of others. Speaking of support, I would like to thank everyone who supported me through this process. I would like to thank my mom because she planned everything and I really look up to her because of all the work she did for me and all the work she does in general and still has to put up with my brother, who's a handful or two. I would also like to thank my poppy because he was the one who made me work super hard to put, and he also put up with all my attempts to slide out of doing any practicing and studying, and all my crying saying, I don't, I can't get it, or it's too hard. But in the end, we made it work out. I would also like to thank my rabbi, Danny, because without her, I don't think I would be here right now. I would also like to thank all of my friends and family for coming here to this big point in my life. It really means a lot to me. A lot to me. Thank you and Shabbat Shalom.
At this time, we invite you to share with us the names of those in need of healing. If you know someone who's ill and would like to share a name, please do so at this time.
All of these people came here from every corner of this country to be here today. Many of them never visited Columbus before or ever thought that they would. <laughs> and they are all here to celebrate this occasion with us. And it wasn't easy for them to be here. There was a lot of planning, time, and expense involved. But they all made it here. Because if something is important, you do it, and you find a way to make it happen. And that is what we did for you. And that is what each and every person in this room has done. If you think about it, look what our ancestors have done to get us to this day and make it happen. It was not easy. Grandpa Marvin's father left Russia in 1916. He left the religious persecution and the pogroms of Russia. He left his family behind and he came to America to start a better life. There was no Instagram or Facebook to keep in touch. There was no Google to help him figure out what would be in store for him here. He committed to making it happen and for us. And look at what Opa went through so you could arrive at this day. Opa lost practically his entire family. He survived Auschwitz and landed in an orphanage. But he did not wallow in his sorrow. He acted with courage and perseverance. He moved to America and got an education that one could really only dream of. And he ended up making an impact on international human rights law so that we could all enjoy the freedoms of our life and our own personal autonomy. This day would not have been possible without him either. Today, Ruth, you taught us about Moses. His work was also not easy. Talk about an insurmountable task. Moses was charged with leading the Jewish people out of slavery in Egypt. And when he completed that, he still wasn't done. Then he had to lead them through the desert, manage them, discipline them along the way. Then he had to create a structure for them by which they could establish their own society. The Torah clearly tells us that initially, when God told them that he was to do all of this, he had no idea how he was going to do it and make it happen. He even tried to bargain, make a deal with God to get out of doing it. Ruth, you work very hard to get to this day. At first, you were freaking out because of all that we asked for you to learn. But we knew you could do it. To you, it was daunting. Learn Hebrew, learn how to read from the Torah, with no vowels nonetheless. Learn how to chant your Torah portion, and learn what your Torah portion means, and understand it, too. And then, write a speech and teach the whole congregation what you think about it. Wow. But in the end, was it possible? Yes. And so the point is, sweet girl, that no matter how impossible the tasks at hand may seem, they are not. You can make anything happen if only you set your mind to it and work hard towards your goals. There is always a way. And as a matter of fact, that is how big things get done in this world. So surround yourself with people who encourage you and help you. Practice. Don't give up. Don't whine. Remain optimistic, which really isn't a problem with you because you are the most optimistic person your mom and I know. One by one, work out the obstacles in your path. Stay focused. And yes, no matter how important you become, take advice from smart people. Moses got advice from his father-in-law. And I never have a problem getting advice from my father-in-law. <laughs> In any case, there are countless strategies, and you must do them all. And with that, we cannot wait to see what else you can achieve in your life. And we hope that we are all here to support and encourage you and celebrate all of your future successes. And we hope that one day you can fill a room with all the people who want to be a part of the special days in your life. Let us say, um,
invite all parents to join in saying the following blessings for your children. We thank you, Adonai, for the time we have shared with our loved ones who have passed on, our, for our companionship with them, and for the sweet memories that we hold in our hearts. In love, we remember their kind words and their unselfish deeds. Tanta Zenta, Uncle Eric, Great Poppy, Cousin Sylvia, Auntie, Auntie Sharon, Cousin Connie, and Aunt Ray. I, let, I invite you to share with us the names of all whom we now remember. Every, wait, okay. May our loved ones endure as a living influence among us. Let us remember them as we recite the Mortar's Kaddish. Please everyone rise as we recite the Mortar's Kaddish together. Amen. Dami Romi Ama Biru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, the Chaim Alenu Veo Kol Yisrael Biru Amen. O Sesh Shalom Bim Rama, Huya Asesh Shalom, Alenu Veo Kol Yisrael Biru Amen. The Alenu signifies the Jewish people. Yeah, sorry. Okay. The Alenu signifies the Jewish people's faith and dedication to God. During the prayer, we bend our knees and bow to, remember, to remind us of these practices. Once used in the days of worship in the temple over 25,000 years ago. Please rise as you sing the Alenu together. Alenu
little bit more space. And when you do leave, eventually, <laughs> um, you have to exit through the rear of the parking lot if you need to make a left onto Olentangy River Road. So please make sure you do that. Thank you so much, Shabbat Shalom.